नमस्कार अगेन माय सिंसियर अपोलॉजी फॉर नॉट शोइंग माय अपोलॉजी आई अंडरस्टैंड कैन नॉट कंपनसेट माय एब्सेंस बट दिस इज फर्स्ट टाइम इन माय एंटायर कैरियर दैट आई एम नॉट शोइंग इन एनी ऑफ द कॉन्फ्रेंस इन विच आई हैव प्रॉमिस्ड सो लेट्स टॉक ऑन सेफ एंड सक्सेसफुल हेयर ट्रांसप्लांट द मोर्टलिटी इन लास्ट ईयर्स इन इंडिया the common cause the chennai case he died because of the septicemia mumbai probably biphasic or delayed anaphylaxis mehsana or ahmedabad case most probably anaphylactic but you know all may be knowing better delhi patient probably infection and hyderabad that person lost his eyes vision because of the infection so the most common cause of mortality seems to be the anaphylaxis which can be manageable and can be avoided infection yes very well avoidable and if it happens then we can manage it if we intervene timely and other cardiac event can also be there which we can probably manage also so the safe hair transplant means the safety of the patient safety of the hair follicle and the satisfaction of the patient these three s are important as far as when we talk of the safe hair transplant my chapters and my papers has been published in ijps also complications in hair transplant and also in my two books means one is the plastic surgery our textbook in which we have written this uh, hair transplant i edited that uh, and practical guide in this all are there so key to reduce complication is detailed pre operative patient and the scalp examination safe operative environment with strict asepsis measure can reduce your chances of mortality and morbidity both and a well trained full time technician and assistant is another very important aspects as for the safety of the hair transplant is concerned consultation is yes important part we need to understand the patient's goal and the concern we need to explain that there is a hair loss is a progressive problem it's not stationary and they will have to continue the medical treatment another thing is a future need of surgery also should be explained to the patient and the limitations of the hair transplant should also be explained as there is a major discrepancy between the demand of the recipient area and the supply of the donor area so they will not get the density they will get the coverage you are not replacing the same number of the graft which were there that is the need of more surgery and medical treatment the there is a very confusion about when medical treatment and when the hair transplant the medical treatment is to prevent the baldness to control the hair loss to control the thinning and to reverse the miniaturization while the hair transplant is to treat the baldness so there is a clear cut demarcation when to treat medically and when to do the transplant but both things are needed to boost up the growth of the existing hair and to replace the lost hair by the transplant so fitness of the hair transplant we all plastic surgeon we know the fitness for such surgery criteria all existing systemic diseases should be under control second is the donor area suitable should be there realistic expectation of the patient from the hair transplant is important thing also contraindication patient with unrealistic expectation means asking for a normal density and a low hair line and patient with body dysmorphic disorder plastic surgeon knows it very well about this uncontrolled any existing disease heavy smokers and alcoholic i do not operate on a smoker patient unless or until he quits the smoking unstable scarring alopecia alopecia irrita and presence of active infection so the hair transplant surgeon should make a balance between the donor supply recipient area demand and the patient expectation this is a fine balance if you don't want to face the complication or the patient unsatisfaction you need to make balance between all these three things the recipient area planning in true sense in true sense hair transplant is an illusion 
मैं शुद्ध हिंदी में बोलता हूं हेयर ट्रांसप्लांट एक धोखा है एंड दिस इल्यूजन कैन बी क्रिएटेड बाय द फ्यूजन ऑफ आर्ट एंड साइंस एंड द प्लास्टिक सर्जन इज द आइडियल पर्सन हु नोज द टेक्निक हु नोज द आर्ट एज वेल सो द प्रॉपर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द ग्राफ्ट इन द रिसिपियंट एरिया इज असेंशियल टू मेक ए सक्सेसफुल शो सो दिस इज हाउ यू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट दैम इंटेलिजेंटली नाउ लेट्स टॉक ऑन द आर्ट आस्पेक्ट ऑफ द हेयर ट्रांसप्लांट द फ्रंट हेयर लाइन मीन्स द फ्रंटल एरिया दैट इंक्लूड्स हेयर एंट्री हेयर लाइन जोन डिफाइंड जोन ट्रांजिशन जोन फॉर लॉक जोन एंड रिमेनिंग फ्रंटल एरिया देन मिड स्केल्प एंड देन द वर्टेक्स दिस इज द टोटल बाल्ड और बाल्डिंग एरिया ऑफ द स्केल्प then very easy concept many time the patient comes in your outdoor and he ask you how many grafts he will be needing sometime it is difficult so i have come out with a very simple concept of concept of four finger another very precise method is the chang method usually we can divide this entire balding area four four and 12 finger also we can say four finger is the front four at then the four finger frontal area mid and then again the four finger is your donor area so they have got 10 10 10 000 grafts in these three crown middle and the front jaw and we are not able to give that much number of graft so this is the four finger this is a very this hand four finger we can say it's roughly 100 square cm front four finger middle four finger and back side four finger usually we implant 3000 graft in the front area 2000 graft in the mid scalp area and 2 to 3000 in the crown area requiring 7 to 9000 to cover a great great 7 you may have the more graft and you may have the less graft depending on the donor availability this is a chang method also i think as a plastic surgeon you must develop of habit of having very precise area calculation so that you can tell the patient that this much number of the graft density are given you although original was this much so they will understand the limitation of the hair transplant and when they come on the follow up they don't talk in high voice that you have given them the less density or your hair didn't grow you can tell them no you needed 10000 graft but we implanted only 3000 grafts so, so density normal density is 100 but we have given you 25 to 30 graft per square centimeter and for which you have paid and all hair has grown this is how you do the distribution slit making then illusion as i said illusion means the gradient density you give front you give the high density then the lower and then for the lower graft to create a good illusion very common demand that the patient ask for the low hair line so that can be met with creating a widow's peak in the center and slightly advancing your anterior temporal fringe if you do these two things the it will give the give the illusion of a low hair line important criteria is the fronto temporal point should be higher than the mid frontal point if you don't do that then fronto temporal angle will be obtuse and it will look unnatural i'll show you later this is an absolute ideal fronto temporal angle and this looks absolute normal result another this is the fronto temporal point lies in the canthus line as the baldness progresses is it bars in the proportion so you need to put them back in the same proportion making it more aesthetic look then rule of putting the entry hairline height it is from 7 to 9 cm but it depends on the grade of baldness and how many number of grafts you are getting so higher grade of baldness with less number of grafts you can put even 8 and even higher and it looks good and is a younger patient have relatively okay donor supply so i put it at 7.5 cm both patients are looking good then this is the concept which i have given this has been published also especially for the novice how to make hair line decoding facial aesthetic is the formula of eight is there you can see this in to detail art of creating the natural hair line you create the gap cluster in the sentinel hair this is the tuft area defined zone transition zone micro and micro irregularities yes i tell you you pay attention to this so many mistakes has been done if you understand this you will never commit in the future let's understand the major mistakes done in this case so this is mid front this hair line looks looks abnormal it looks straight it looks bizarre like why because 
फ्रंटो टेम्पोरल पॉइंट इज लोअर देन द मिड फ्रंटल पॉइंट सो इट इज मेकिंग इट स्ट्रेट सिमिलरली मल्टीफॉलिकुलर यूनिट हैज बिन पुट इन द एंटी हेयर लाइन थिकर ग्राफ्स हैज बिन पुट इन द एंटी हेयर लाइन कर्ल ऑफ हेयर आर इन द डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन एंड हेयर आर पुट इन डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन सो इट इज गिविंग ए अनैचुरल लुक सो इट शुड नॉट बी डन आई से इट्स ए क्राइम ओफ you can understand this is a round this is again a common demand by the hair transplant patient when the, when he comes he says at the age of 16 years my line was this and i want this because for this how come it is hurting me so you need to explain this that what happened in this case this was the receded patient asked for the round hair line and it was done but ideally it should not have been made round round as i explained the Frontal temporal point should be higher than the mid frontal point, so it should not be done. See, this is a disaster done by a plastic surgeon. He put the full thickness graft in the anterior hair line, and the hair on the back side of that means frontal temporal is lost, and it looks quite ugly. So it's a, like a crime. This again unnatural hair line. It should not be done. So. when they ask for the lower hair line, I told you two concept. One is you create the widow's peak, and you advance the temporal fringe anti temporal fringe area that's this is a scar again you can think that to hide this i have to go down to the hairline no you don't make low, lowering of the hairline you just create a widow's peak so it's a graph economical way of lowering the hairline and covering the scar then the crown it's a difficult area to cover it's a black hole it's a challenge also and there is a very uh, dispute when to cover or not so avoid the age means avoid covering the crown or vertex before the age of 35 or 38 years till it stabilizes patient understand the meaning of the hair transplant patient understand the meaning of the medical treatment and is preferable to treat the medicine uh, a vertex by the medicine and always cover in the last when you have finished with the front and the mediscal area these are our vertex result few of the cases case 1 case 2 and case 3 we did the vertex coverage in this area now let's come on the technical aspect of the safe hair transplant the history apart from the vital parameter the most vital part is the existing medical illness medicine patient taking and the allergy is the most crucial aspect and the drug interaction many times we forget that there is a concept of drug interaction you must understand many times the patient comes here they tell doctor sab ye dekh lena meri medicine mein kahi aapki dawa se koi reaction patient understand but many times the physician do not understand that there is a word like drug interaction propanol with adrenaline patient your patient is on propanol then and you are using going to use adrenaline during hair transplant they may go into hypertensive crisis and it's a disaster antiplaquetic drug he fees on then there is chances of lidocaine toxicity biphasic analysis is important thing sometimes old time we i think we have not read this biphasic analysis when many time the patient develop the reaction in operative room we give them steroid we give them avil something like that and we manage it patient goes home but the anaphylactic reaction has not been completely disappeared it has been treated partially it may come back so it is called as biphasic anaphylaxis it may come in 1 to 8 hours or it may be extend even more than that so you should be cautious if patient has develop any allergic reaction either he should be admitted in the hospital at least for the 24 hours or a caution should be given to him that he should be near by the hospital techniques of beat uh, fut fu and body hair already dr seema lecture i already have covered it depends on the surgeon's capability how much patient's choice donor availability and all that now let's come slightly on the anatomical aspect although we are plastic surgeon you don't need much of the explanation but this applied aspect there is we know all that all the anastomosis takes place in the midline of the scalp so there is a water shed area which has got relatively less blood supply the chances of necrosis is there as you are seeing this patient they have got a central necrosis because if you have created more trauma then as the comprised vascularity in the midline of the scalp is there so the chances of necrosis increases 
Then the space between the galea and the pericranium, we know that it extends up to the eyebrows and possibly up to the occipital area. So any fluid or any infection is there, it is going to trickle on the face and the eyelid and it is going to look quite embarrassing. So this is edema is another important embarrassing situation, facial edema, post hair transplant for which patients are often worried and they, they hesitate to go for the transplant ki hamara pura face football ki tarah phool gaya tha us patient ka isliye hum nahi karana chahte is a patient who died in the mumbai because of the edema or we don't know what was the cause probably anaphylaxis as said delayed anaphylaxis so this is the supine dorsal position you you advise them or they can ride in the faulus position but do not tell them not to take the uh, this these two position otherwise they will have the edema over the face because this is mechanical edema all the fluid tumescence we injected uh, slips down and comes on the forehead and the eyes and it looks quite embarrassing so post operative edema can be managed by the postural position buffered aesthetic solution and surgical trauma these are the things which stimulates uh, this so the use a triamcinolone pre and post operative systemic corticosteroid some gives but i do not give keep recipient site small means and the postural advises and patient lie in supine position as i explained to me sense small amount of multiple should be injected rather than putting at the same time large amount which will need more amount and compromise the circulation so avoid that then always always important that you inject to me sense fluid below the subcutaneous area means the subcutaneous plane plane not below the galea if you inject below the galea the surface will come up vessel become more closer to the skin so chances of more bleeding will be there then this is a routine protocol i tell you every surgeon must adopt to have a this white board in which you are writing the total dose and short history of the patient because the hair transplant is a long procedure patient comes in the morning he is diabetic and mean by the evening we forget it patient is hypertensive tobacco heavy smoker we forget it by the evening so it should be in front of the eyes of the surgeon it should be kept and all the drugs should be written so the surgeon knows the what is how much drugs and how many drugs he has consumed then the raise the galea means the strip fut do not go deeper to the galea do not uh, give cut to the galea because neurovascular bundle is running over that safe donor harvesting although it has been covered by in dr seema's lecture safe donor here concept means the hair should implanted hair should stay permanently means harvest from the safe donor area grow naturally means harvest healthy hair follicle and do not compromise the donor aesthetic means safe excision limit which we explain this is a turkic patient in which over harvesting has been done it's like you are burning the scalp of the patient then harvesting very closely lead to the necrosis or if you am um, this leads like you are destroying the house of someone if you remember these two things you will not do it in your patient this is donor effluvium is a case of fu to fu over harvesting tight closer induces the donor effluvium then the punch size if your punch size should be adequate if you use high size of punch then it may create the large ugly donor area scar 0.9 mm but it depends on the your experience and capability if you are using large poor quality punch with high rpm then a patient who has keloidal and hypertrophic tendency they might doubt show the keloid or hypertrophic scan even in the fu scars this is ununiform extraction leading to poor donor appearance mouth beaten appearance we call it surgeon should know how to avoid the over harvesting the surgeon should know the safe excision limit residual density donor area evaluation hair mass concept optimum punch size how to minimize transection and how to produce optimum result of hair transplant many times many people when they watch the hair transplant and they see one procedure from morning to night is going the same so they say it's a monotonous and there is not much to read in the hair transplant no my dear friend these are the so many things which a surgeon should know a hair transplant surgeon should know to do the donor respect 
and to avoid the whore, uh, over harvesting. There are so many concepts you must know before doing the hair transplant. You must not do the close. You, you please pay the attention to these uh, round um, rounds, red rounds. So I am showing it here. If you are doing too much close, then the chances of necrosis is there. If you are doing in a linear fashion, you can see here, again there is a chance of necrosis is there. So you must harvest them uniformly, keeping them either one out of four or one out of three. One you harvest, then you leave two, then you do the fourth harvesting uniformly to do the donor respect. So this is how the uniform excision of the graft. For this, you can divide into multiple zones and then you harvest the graph, uh, number of graph equally from all these squares. Then again, this is the concept given by me. Please understand this. When we are harvesting, there is always temptation of cherry picking of the graph. Means always you see that all the multifollicular unit you harvest, don't do that. If you do that, then there will be thinning in the donor. You are harvesting the same number of graph, 3000. Another person is also harvesting the same number of graph, but you are showing too much of the scalp, so he is not showing. The reason he is intelligent, but you harvested all the multifollicular unit from the donor area. If you harvest, if you do that, then there will be definitely scalp show. So at least leave thoda sa uspe raham khao. Don't harvest all the stout hair follicle, leave some there in from area. Do not excise all multifollicular unit from one area which I explained. If you are going for the second and the third pass excision, do not excise the orphan hair. Again I tell you this is a concept, sometimes there is a one area and one hair follicle is there, like here. Isolated hair in an allopic area, rest of the hair has been harvested, so it's easy to engage them and harvest them in temptation, but don't do that because if you harvest this one isolated solitary hair follicle, you are going to make a big allopic patch. So I call it orphan hair, so do not attack on orphan. So excise shadow hair means a hair beneath another hair, you can excise that to maintain the aesthetic and to prevent the scalp show. I call it a shadow hair. Then if you do follow the concept, even after excision of so many graphs, more 4,500 graphs, means it's almost 5,000 graphs I have harvested, scalp show is not there and you can see so healthy uh, scalp donor area is there. Then the optimum result of hair transplant depends on the harvesting of the healthy graft, minimal ischemic injury by reducing the graft out of the body time and a traumatic implantation. Harvesting healthy hair follicle means the prevent transaction and prevent injury of the graft while scoring the removal of the graft. This is also important aspect. Please, please pay attention to this, those who are doing the FUE. These are the two simple things I am showing you. You are going to, you can reduce your transaction up to less than 1% if you follow my these two techniques. Always, always engage the epidermal blush rather than the hair. Because we know when the hair enter inside the dermis, epidermis and dermis, there is always a change in the direction. It's not exactly like this when it changes. So if you engage the hair, it, it, it may transect. So if it is epidermal blush is the intraepidermal portion of the hair shaft that is called as the epidermal blush. So you center the epidermal brush rather than the hair to reduce the transaction. Another important thing is many times we engage or centralize the epidermal brush, but our angle, the length of length of the punch and the handle you need to consider because they should also be in the same direction. You engage epidermal brush, but the entire length is of the handle and the punch is not it at the same angle where the hair was ejecting, you are going to transect it. This is another important thing that means the hair, epidermal blush, punch and the handle all should be in one line to prevent the transaction. This is important thing. 
uh, given this learning module of FE harvesting, you can go and read. This is a beautiful module. Uh, learn it, practice it, and my transaction rate is almost negligible. I can say less than one percent in most of my cases. Now, this is important thing. You are surgeon is doing excision and your assistants are removing the dissected graft and they may not be trained enough they are not working with you regularly and they can do the oil shell injury so this is important and they are just you are harvesting healthy graft but they are destroying your graft so you must take care i use plasma as a graft holding solution these are the various injuries of the hair follicle if surgeon knows it he can identify it and he can prevent it also this is a transaction parcel transaction or a complete transaction then the graft injury during the removal this is a decapping means the hair follicle is left inside if your follicles uh, forceps are not of good quality then you can the assistant take out only the cap means the dermis and epidermal portion rest of the follicle is left inside or you can do the deep plugging is there rough removal is there or there can be desheathing means the avulsion of the hair root or there can be fracture or hydrogenic splaying of the graft can be there these are the different important injuries of the graft many times you think that you have harvested good number of graft but the results are not good the reason is that most of your grafts were injured while handling of the graft so you must know and examine and develop habit of examining your extracted graft in the microscope so you can do your quality control then graft holding Solution is an important thing. There is a confusion about it. If your ischemia time or out of body time is less than two hours, then you can put them in saline or whatever the media you want to use. It's not going to make difference. So there are the studies has been done in which if you are doing at the same time, means simultaneous or direct or instant implantation or you are implanting within the two hours it's not going to make the difference. But if it is more than two hours, then certainly it may affect the survival of the graft if you are then if you are graft out of body time you are expecting is more than six hours then hypothermosol intracellular graft holding solution which requires the chilling are indicated otherwise they are not normal saline ringer lactate plasma they are extra cellular uh, graft holding solutions they do not need chilling if you do the chilling then there will be the osmosis and the cell will swell so it's you keep them in a cool temperature means around 10 to 12 degrees centigrade rather than the chilling so this is all about then the implantation is as important as the extraction rather i say implantation is more important because you are not there and your technicians are implanting and you are either you many of the surgeon leave the hospital or they are doing the consulting and it's unguarded unsupported by the surgeon so implantation is more important and whatever num good quality of graft you harvest if they are not doing proper implantation your result is screwed up so no touch to root technique is very important this is the you can see here you, you are holding the from the root means you can create the micro trauma and this micro trauma can damage the dermal cell they can damage the stem cells and will affect the result so we have practice of implanting by no touch to root technique we are not touching we just uh, held up graft by epidermal end or the hair shaft and implant them or i tell you the implanters are the best way if you can practice it it's a good way to do a, a, a traumatic implantation then the various implantation problem if you are putting them too deep then you can develop the cyst if you are putting forcefully in a shallow uh, slit then there can be j shaped and kinking of the hair will be there sometimes the popping is another issue is there and you if you are slits were deep and someone has put graph into it then you can put another graph over that that is called as piggybacking these all are going to jeopardize the result of hair transplant so always always do the test graph to know the exact size of the slit and accordingly the size of the graph you must create the slit
as i have shown you if you are placing them too deep there will be cyst formation if you are putting them superficially there will be cobblestone appearance both looks unnatural the complaints and complication complaints are like the pain hai edema itching graft dislodgement bleeding non surgical is the commonness is the patient disfers dissatisfaction the complications are the aesthetic the visible scarring the keloid hypertrophic scar and the donor hair effluvium medical is the infection wound descents neuralgia painful neuroma let's see now we need to understand the role of assistant and the technician is very important my dear friend try to have the full time if you are a hair transplant surgeon and you are looking as a career in the hair transplant you must make your own team do not trust on your freelancer team because they are not well equipped we well trained with your habits your operative setup and you are also not uh, in connection with them so there is a breach so they play a very important role in reducing the morbidity and mortality here when we are doing plastic surgery they really assist they are not doing any procedure independently but in in hair transplant assistant and technicians are as important as the surgeon because they are doing some procedure independently so they are not less than the surgeon and you give importance to them you give them recognition you pay them and keep them with you for the longer time train them properly and try to hold with you and you should update them regularly to give the best result so i again made a training module which has been published in my books also and which has been published in the journal also folliculitis is again two types it's a, it can be a reactionary folliculitis because of the foreign body or because of the minoxidil poor hygiene or it can be infective if it is infective with the pus discharge you must treat we all plastic surgeon know how to treat wound descents yes chances of wound descents especially in the plastic surgeon hand is more because they are more confident they feel we can harvest any wide strip because they are able to cover it so don't do that don't do that because there is a limitation here this skin in the mastoid region is very tight so you can have the broader strip in the central occiput but keep your strip here the narrow here in this area so chances of hypertrophic scar keloid is there we are not uh, safe so apply all your plastic surgery principle don't be over confident that we can harvest any width of strip because we are plastic surgeon now few complication itching and urticaria indicates allergic syncope vasovagal is one of the most common uh, problem during the hair transplant because it is done under the local anesthesia long time so take care of keep upon talking with the patient keep patient comfortable keep reduce noises and the disturbances in the ot another important thing is hypertension with bradycardia is the most important and dreaded complication if your patient was on propanol and you have <coughs> use adrenaline gylocaine then it develops the hypertensive crisis but here hypertension with bradycardia is there it's alarming emergency you must stop surgery immediately and take care of his hypertension and all that and you might have to call the anesthetist and you need to shift the patient to the icu then the agitation confusion lidocaine toxicity hiccup is sometime a one out of the 100 but it's a quite embarrassing situation patient get hiccup hiccup after the surgery especially more common in the strip surgeries assimilation of c2 and c4 phrenic nerves the best thing is a chlor promegene oral large actil tablet is not not available so you light chlor promegene 25 mg twice it settles very fast in 2 days then the conclusion the detailed counseling understanding and explaining what patient is asking and what is possible and what you can offer please i am repeating understanding and explaining what patient is asking means what he wants and what is really possible he was for the low hair line he want the high density is it possible it's not possible and he is asking 7000 graft he want from the body hair also and you are not trained in the body hair 
or you cannot harvest so many graphs means you cannot offer that is your limitation so you must understand this thing these three things then the detailed pre operative patient examination is history what medicine he is taking history of allergy is another important thing and as i recently said that well trained full time assistant with safe operating environment if you do that you can really you are nullify complication and complaints of from the hair transplant and you will be able to deliver a safe hair transplant my sincere advice to you for reading this practical guide to hair transplant we have written this book robert to myself and dr seema have done exhaustive work 52 videos are there more than 22 or sees faculty has written the chapter we have also edited and written uh, the hair transplant uh, edition uh, part in this uh, six volume of our dr agrawal karun agrawal's book that is the textbook of plastic and reconstructive surgery we have put our entire experience and this book has been designed especially for the novice hair transplant surgeon it is available at amazon you can buy it and another thing is i have a lot of videos for you people you can go on the youtube i we have made lot of tutorials lot of tutorials has been made the chapters from the practical guide of the hair transplant which are very very helpful for you so thank you and again my sincere apology that i could not come physically i am really sorry for this thank you